Hey y'all, welcome to my kitchen. Come on in and have a seat at my table. And when you get in your chair, go ahead and hit share because sharing is caring. Today, we're gonna to be making homemade spaghetti sauce. And this sauce, you'll be able to actually can and save it for later. Um, just in case you decide one day that you wanna make spaghetti, then you can always go to your own pantry and pull it out. Um, we're probably gonna have it later today. I probably will add it to some meat sauce or make some vegetables, um, saute up some vegetables and go from there. So um, again, welcome to my kitchen and um, come on in and, and have a seat and go ahead and share when you get in. I'm ever so thankful for everyone that joins and gets a chance to watch this. If you're watching it on the replay, you can always still hit share and have a watch party. Also, when you get a chance, you can also go to my YouTube channel, Little Trey's Kitchen, click comment, share, and um, make sure you click the notification button to be notified when there's a new video being uploaded. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and make a little um, garlic bread. And this is what I'm doing. I take an Italian loaf and I cut it in half and I'm just gonna drizzle it liberally with some olive oil. I mean, like get it really good because it's kind of like the best part. Helps it gonna crisp up. And once you drizzle it with some olive oil, I'm gonna take a little Italian seasoning. Here's that top thing again, I promise you, I don't understand why they put that thing in there, but someday somebody's gonna explain it to me. And I'm just gonna drizzle this um, with this Italian seasoning. It's funny because I keep putting it back no matter what. Um, so that's some Italian seasoning. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit it with just a little garlic powder. Because after all it is, well, it's garlic cheese bread. So just a little garlic powder. And in my family we like pepper. So I'm going to use some fresh pepper when I do this. Um, so get you a nice little pepper meal. It, it makes a difference. Don't use the ground pepper on this. It makes a huge difference to add fresh cracked pepper. So you can add as much pepper as you like. My family, I tell you all the time, we like black pepper. So I'm putting a lot of black pepper on it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top it off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese, just a little bit or a lot of bit. Depends on what your family likes. Um, we like it. so. I'm gonna just finish this little container up right here and rest rest yourself. I have a whole nother one right here if I needed it. But this is how it starts out. And this, so I'm gonna just pop this in the oven until it's nice golden brown. Give me a second. Put it in the oven on 350. So what we're gonna start off now is we're gonna go ahead and make our homemade marinara sauce. Today, I'm operating by myself, my partner in crime, my son. He, he's working. Who told him he could work? How dare he leave me stranded? So be patient with me today. It's just me in the kitchen and I'm somehow the cameraman. I got to hire somebody. Got to hire me a real cameraman. Don't tell my son I said that. Although he's watching. Hey baby, mommy loves you. Okay, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using crushed um, San Marzano um, uh, tomatoes and I have some whole ones. So let me bring you closer to the oven or to the stove actually so you can actually see what we're doing. Um, I told y'all be patient now, be patient. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Okay, so this pot boiling is just gonna be for my pasta because I like angel hair pasta. It only takes about three to five minutes to cook it so um, I'll put that on later. In this pot, it's totally empty. I'm just gonna add a couple of teaspoons of olive oil, y'all see the smoke? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add, this is a whole onion that I chopped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Yes. And that was a, um, a whole bell pepper, just a green bell pepper. Why? Because I like green bell peppers in my, um, in my spaghetti sauce. You can also add, at this point you can add some mushrooms to it if you like. And we're just gonna saute it up until they become slightly soft. Keep in mind, this is just marinara sauce. This is just spaghetti sauce. No, um, no um, meat sauce just yet. You can, at this point, once you get this going, you can actually make this into any kind of 
sauce you want. You can make it for a vegetable spaghetti. You can use it in lasagna. You can um, pour it over stuffed, mush, um, stuffed shells if you like. Again, this is just the beginnings of how I like to make my spaghetti sauce. Um, and you can also do this when you don't have um, the time to run to the store and you're just trying to think of something quick for your family. You can always bust open a can of tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, or whole tomatoes and crush them up yourself. In my household, um, canned tomatoes, tomato sauce, tomato paste, those are all staples in my house. So this is just what how I like it. So all of my Italian friends, I love you to life. This is just the city girl with country roots doing her spaghetti sauce. And so please, please be patient with me. I also pulled some because I have it growing in my garden. I have some fresh basil and I um, top it off with some fresh parsley. So we'll do that later. I had some oregano in the garden and um, was lazy and didn't do it. Julie, then we're on the same page. When you, when you, if you made spaghetti sauce this morning, it's perfect. We're growing tomatoes in our garden. Um, so you can easily do this with fresh um, tomatoes. And, and all you would do is start by boiling your tomatoes and peeling them. And then you would start with the same process that I'm actually going to show you. This is just quick and easy. I like San Marzano tomatoes. I also like fire ro roasted tomatoes. You can also do it with that. Um, but something about the San Marzanos that gives it the um, extra oomph that I kind of like the texture and the flavors come through on the San Marzanos. Um, the smell of this going on in this pot, the onions and the bell peppers is amazing. I wish you guys could smell it. Now, normally I would have also done garlic, um, the, my garlic paste that I've, I've told you guys about before, how you just take the garlic paste, um, garlic cloves, mash it down with some um, coarse salt and make it into a um, paste. I didn't do it. Um, I didn't do it. I just, I just didn't. Um, again, being lazy and just could not make myself do it today. So I apologize for my laziness, but please forgive me. I promise it's still going to be good. We're still going to add a little um, garlic powder to it because there's nothing like having spaghetti sauce with, um, with um, the garlic flavor in it. So I am going to eventually add some garlic powder to it. So just be patient with me and I'll show you what how we're going to do that but the smell of the garlic and the onions and the bell peppers is amazing so once you get this and, and remember what i also said is that we're going to can these so i got some jars that um i'm once i finish making the sauce i'm going to actually um pour up this um sauce into jars and make sure they seal really well and then um i'll have it in my pantry for whenever i want to make spaghetti sauce or or what have you so um, we've already begun sweating our, and this is just a simple sweat. I don't want us to overcook this because it's going to continue to cook. Again, it's, um, this is just bell peppers and, um, onions. Can y'all see that? This is the one good thing about this. Y'all see, we really cooking over here, y'all, that I can actually bring it up to you guys and let you see it. So I have about three cans of Sagento San Marzano tomatoes. These are, these are crushed tomatoes. This is the crushed one. Let me show you guys what I'm using. San, um, Sagento's San Marzano tomatoes. I like these. Um, something about these tomatoes. And don't worry about all of that flavor that's still in this can. I told y'all my mama wouldn't let me let that go. So we're going to get all those googly bits out of there. So I got three cans of this. And I'm just going to pour it right on into here. Just like that. Ooh. I might have should have had a bigger pot, but we're gonna make this work. Already looking like tomato sauce. And we're gonna stir this stuff and heat it. Now, we may not um, get this. I'll show you what it begin what what it should look like once it's all said and done. Um, but I also, when I'm making this, I also like for it to simmer and cook all day. Just me doesn't have to once you get it started you can actually go ahead and eat it when you're ready I just like it to um, to sit and simmer all day just because the longer it sits the better the flavors develop it's just that kind of thing but 
the longer they sit in that jar, those same flavors are gonna are gonna are gonna melt together. So it's okay even if we don't let this simmer all day, but it's gonna be good no matter what. And I'm actually kind of scared, y'all, because it's at the top. Y'all see? Can y'all see that it's actually at the top of the pot? But I got one more, one more jar, one more can to add. Um, and it's fresh, um, not fresh, they're whole tomatoes. And if you could see, these are whole tomatoes, not peeled. And you do need to actually crush these up um, because I also like the texture. That can go in at the end. I, I don't wanna overdo our um, pot for a second. But if you have some kitch kitchen scissors, the best thing to do is to take your kitchen scissors because these are whole tomatoes and you want to break them up. So you take your kitchen scissors and you just begin to chop them in the can, right? And just chop them. The other way you can do it is you can take your hands and you can put your hands down and um, put your hands and squeeze them. The only problem that I have with that is that they are full of juice. And when you do it full of juice, what actually happens is, is that it squirts and it gets all over the place. So just be careful and you choose to do it how you want to. I prefer to do the kitchen scissor method unless I'm in a mood of playing with my food and then I'll go ahead and do that. And the reason why I say it's good to use kitchen scissors is because they actually come apart and you can actually wash them. I'm also gonna add some tomato paste um, if you're ever in a pinch and you want it to taste like you've done something all day, the best thing to do is add a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste, about three um, of tomato paste. And what that actually does is that it gives it that all day simmer flavor. And this is just if you're trying to get it done in a pinch. I'm also going to add about a tablespoon or so of sugar. And the sugar is to break down the acidity, to counteract the acidity of the tomatoes. Tomatoes are very acidic. And so you want to try to um, counteract that somehow. And something sweet always gives it that um, balance that you need. Now, do you have to use sugar? Absolutely not. You can actually use um, honey or agave and, and it will change the flavor of your tomato sauce. But I just want you to know that you can do it. Now, again, all of my Italian friends, please keep in mind, I, this is just how Trey's doing it. Um, no, I'm not Italian by, by nature, but I love my Italian food. And this is just how I like it. So I apologize if I've offended you by saying add, the, um, add some honey or agave just to counteract that sweetness. You don't have to, that's just what I would suggest. That's just me, if you don't want to use the sugar. But we're gonna bring this up to a nice little simmer, just like that, it's gonna start talking to us. And while that's simmering, I'm gonna go ahead and um, add a little water to my can, cause that's a lot of tomato sauce, and I just can't. This is beginning to speak, um, because it's beginning to bubble and boil. So one second, let me get some water. Now you don't need a lot, just enough to go back and forth into the cans to clean them out. Because um, like I said before, my mom, um, she didn't play that. You had to clean your cans out. And so I'm going to be dutiful and I'm going to clean out my cans because that's what my mother would have done. Waste not one, not my mom would say. <laughs> so here we go. And I'm just gonna stir this up. Now here are my, I'm gonna add a couple of um, things of basil. I'm just gonna pull this off and, and put them in. Again, this is basil from the garden. It smells good, y'all smell that? Doesn't it look pretty? Nice and pretty, pretty green. I'm um, just gonna throw, I'm not gonna tear them. I know people who do because this is um, going to be my canned spaghetti, um, jarred spaghetti sauce. I'm adding these whole, so I don't mind them being whole. If I was serving this right away, maybe I would, but 
um, it's not necessary. So I'm just gonna pick these off and throw them into my um, spaghetti sauce and see how quick this comes together. And I know you guys are like, Trey, you said you was gonna add some garlic and I'm gonna add garlic powder is what I'm gonna do, but I want to make sure that my spaghetti sauce is where I want it um, by adding this, adding these basil leaves. Here we go. See how quick that was? And I just pinched them off with my nail. And I'm just gonna add them in there. Oh my goodness, this is already smelling so good. That basil all by itself, the basil, the onions, the bell pepper. And this is just like any name brand spaghetti sauce that you get over the counter um, out of the grocery store and you just wanna let it just cook for just a little, little while. And make sure you're getting it all the way at the bottom. Make sure all those peppers and onions come up off the bottom. See how quick that was, guys? It's not hard at all. And it's, this is probably, you get spaghetti sauce that you really, really like. Cause how many times do you really, um, this is about a, maybe t two tablespoons of garlic powder. Um, granulated garlic powder, not garlic salt. But how many times have you gone to the store, right? And you've bought spaghetti sauce out of the jar and you still come home and doctor it up. You're still adding more flavor or you're trying to make it taste how you want it to taste. Um, again, hence the reason why I don't do recipes because it's something that it, I don't need to tell you how your food should taste. You should know how you want your food to taste. And so adding a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you can add mushrooms, you can add squash, you can add whatever to this. But if you could go to your pantry and pull spaghetti sauce out, pour it on your meat or your shells or on your pizza and it tastes the way you want it to taste and you don't have to doctor it up and you didn't add all that sodium to it, how good is that? This is like that times 10. So this is like buying spaghetti sauce and not having to doctor it up. Now I can't tell you, I buy spaghetti sauce all the time over the counter, but I'm as I'm adding my meat and I'm adding stuff, I'm constantly tasting it because I'm saying, it's not what I really want. When I do it this way and I jar it up and I still have it in my pantry, guess what? It tastes the way that I want it to taste every time and I don't have to continue to doctor it up. That's the reason why I like to make my own spaghetti sauce and that's the reason why I'm showing you right now how, how to do just that. So if you can just see, we're at the brim of this, you guys. I can't believe that I did not get a bigger pot and I'm so tempted to reach under this cabinet and get a bigger pot because I am in scared mode that it's just gonna bubble over and we're gonna have a bubbling mess on our hands. But it is the kitchen and this is real life. This is how life works. This, sometimes it's, it's, I want you to see me make mistakes because sometimes Life isn't perfect. We're not always perfect in the kitchen and it's okay. I get intimidated when I watch some of the professional cooks, professional chefs actually do this because I'm like, mm, I'm not that good. I'm not, I don't, let me rephrase it. I am that good. <laughs> At least to me and my family, I am. Um, but sometimes we need to see that it's okay to make mistakes. They always seem so perfect on TV and on YouTube and all that. And um, I'm not that. I'm so not that girl. I mess up all the time and I burn stuff all the time. But I also know what I like and I know what my family likes. And so because of that, I make sure that I do this um, and show you that it is just this easy. It's easy to do this. Notice I didn't add any salt to anything. A lot of times when you buy the jarred tomatoes, they come um, with a preservative already in it and it's kind of high in sodium. So I didn't add any salt. Doesn't mean that I'm not gonna add salt. Just means that I haven't added any salt um, to it just yet. And I have, I'm letting this cook some more. I'm gonna taste it in just a second to see if I like it, if I need to add some more um, garlic or if I need to go ahead and add that salt. We are gonna add some pepper. 
Um, I don't really like my spaghetti spicy, spicy, but um, I do like to add red pepper flakes to it. So, so we may not be adding hell flakes, but we may add some red pepper flakes. Look how pretty this is, guys. Can you see it? Look, look how pretty this is. Look, can y'all see that? That's really pretty. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope, hopefully you are. Hopefully, hopefully you guys saw that. I told you I'm working solo, so don't don't judge me right now, okay? I'm gonna grab a spoon because I want to taste it. Okay, let's. Oh, look, you guys, it's beginning to talk. I like when it talks. So I'm gonna um take a little spoon and taste this up. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add some salt to it because it does need a little salt to break up that acidity, but it has the right amount um, to, I'm sorry, not to break up the acidity, to bring the um, freshness out. Now again, I like to um, have this cooking all day and that's probably about a teaspoon or so. You could probably add more if you'd like. Um, and I'm, I'm going to also add a little bit more um, basil to it because I want more basil flavor. Um, what else can I add to it? And then we'll add some pepper to it too. And you want to make sure that you are going down to the bottom of this, getting down to the bottom. I told you I was scared because I think I over, I overdid it in this little pot. But that just means I'm going to have enough to... Um, we like pepper, don't judge me. <laughs> um, but it's gonna be enough for me to do dinner tonight and have a couple of jars put away in the pantry for when we're ready to do spaghetti another night or lasagna or stuffed shells, which would be really, really good. Um, let's see, look at this, nice and pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and get that um, basil and add some more basil. Cause I pulled a lot from the garden, you guys. Cause um, although it smells good, sometimes it takes a little bit of um, a little bit of it to make it, or a lot of it to make it taste. Um, so you can actually have that hint of basil in the background. But we are adding that, and I'm going to stir this up some more. And now is the time if you were going to make this um, all day kind of sauce, this is the point that you, hopefully you got more room in your pot than I have in mine. <laughs> that you would just put a lid on it, um, put it all the way down to a simmer and just let it go for about um, two to maybe three hours. The first half, about an hour, hour and a half, you're gonna leave it covered and let it just cook covered. And then for the last hour and a half, you just leave the top off. And um, and when you are ready to process it, I'm gonna show you, I have these little jars that I'm ready to process. They've been cleaned. I mean, it's got a little water in it, but they've been cleaned. Um, and what I do is I heat the jars back up. And the way that I heat the jars up, there's two ways of doing this. You can run hot, hot water um, from your sink, um, depending on how, how, how hot your water goes. You can add that to your, um, to your, um, you can boil the water, um, heat the water up in the sink and run your um, jars under that water and then add um, your lid and your lip into a, a bowl of hot, hot water because this needs to be hot and hot so that when this hot hits this, it doesn't shatter your glass. Or what I've also learned to do is run it through um, the last cycle in my dishwasher which makes it extremely hot. Um, and then once you pour it into the jar, you just take your, you wanna make sure you wipe off the rim, add your lip or your lid, and then you wanna add your ring and just close it. Now, something my mom taught me is she takes her jars, turn them upside down, just like this on a towel. And what happens is, is that the lids will actually seal that way. Um, that's just what she did, so. Um, I learned that that trick. I don't know if it's a trick or if it's something that you're really supposed to do. But I'm going to go ahead and um, start my pasta. 
because I am actually almost ready. I'm gonna taste, I got a little um, angel hair pasta because that's what I like. I like angel hair over um, other pastas. So I'm gonna take that and start. Y'all saw me jump, that scared me just a little bit. It was talking, I thought it was about to yell. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started because it only takes about five minutes for this um, angel hair pasta to cook. Y'all was gonna let me forget the bread in the oven. Man, I almost forgot about the bread in the oven. Let me go check this bread because what I don't wanna have happen is to burn my bread. Let me, let's go check it, hold on, let's see. Hold on, let me, let's go in here. Oh, y'all almost had me burning my bread. Look, y'all see our bread? It's almost, the cheese is um, a little darker than I like, darker than I like on the cheese. I like it to be nice and golden, but it's okay. It's okay. It'll eat is what they say, but again, we make mistakes in the kitchen and it's okay. And you need to know that it's okay to make a mistake. I don't want us to get overwhelmed when it comes to um, everything is not perfect the way it's done on TV because I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. And when they are doing things on TV, they're doing it um, and they have a whole team of people behind them. We don't, we just have us. So I'm my own sous chef, I'm my own um <laughs> chef um it's just it so it's okay to make a mistake and again once you're finished you bit you're able to taste it and it's going to taste the way you want it to taste and not the way someone else has told you it should taste um and every it's going to do that every time you open up that jar out of your pantry as opposed to opening up a jar out of the grocery store and you know what's in it because you put it in there you can also at this point add some oregano you can also add um as a matter of fact let's go ahead and add i wish now i wish i would have gotten the fresh oregano from the garden but i have some dried oregano and i'm just going to add um maybe a tablespoon worth just to give it that oregano flavor and while this is talking and spitting it's going good y'all It's verbal today. Today we got some verbal sauce. <laughs> verbal sauce. Okay, so once I get this stirred up, I'm gonna taste it because I want to, um, I do want to make sure that it's where I want it to be. And then we can go from there and actually put it on our pasta. And look, if you don't want any sauce at all, because I know people that don't want meat sauce and just want to be a vegetarian meal you can do just this sauce and your um and your pasta and it's going to be okay um i've done this um pasta sauce with um sauteed vegetables like i've done sauteed green beans I, at one point i was a pescatarian so um i wasn't eating um meat wasn't eating anything other than seafood and what i did that um six years for no for five years Five year, four or five years, straight um, pescatarian. And two weeks of that, I tried to be vegan. I tried it, it didn't work for me. So, um, but what you can do with this, because we haven't added anything that wasn't, uh, that, was, that was meat based, everything here that we put in this pot is vegan. So um, you can just add this on top of your pasta and be done. Or you could saute up some onions you can saute up some um squash some zucchini um some green beans and throw it in here and make your make your own um a vegetable spaghetti it is really really good that way you can also throw in some cauliflower if you like that's just you know just little things just little hints of uh, ideas that you can actually do and it still be good okay I think I want to taste it and at this point because we added our um, tomato paste it's gonna give it the flavor of you cooking it all day nothing better than it actually going all day but the tomatoes the tomato paste gives it the illusion that you've been cooking it all day so I'm gonna go in for one more taste of this and then we'll be able to see what else we need. Now, I added some pepper 
and I added some more basil and I think I added a touch of salt. That's what I think I did. So let's see. Yes. That addition, the oregano and the other um, seasonings that I added, it's exactly what it needed. So I am excited for this. And as soon as my pasta, the longer it, it again, the longer this sits, the longer you allow this to sit, the more and the flavors are going to develop and it's going to be really good when it's time for you to actually serve this. Again, this is a lot. This is just plain spaghetti sauce. We've used San Marzano crushed tomatoes. We've added fresh um, basil. We did oregano. We've put in salt and some pepper, some garlic powder, onions, and bell peppers. And at this point, and we added tomato paste. And at this point, what you could really do is let it just sit and simmer until you're for a couple hours so that the flavors develop even the more and then start jarring it up. We can actually start jarring this right now. But because my jars have actually been sitting out for a minute, I'm not going to put this in this hot, hot jar and we have a huge mess on our hands. I'm going to have to heat my jars back up and my rings and my lid and then we'll start all over and then I can jar it up. So I'm going to let it simmer tonight. We are having spaghetti tonight. I am going to um, do a turkey spaghetti, so I'm just gonna, the good thing is that there's not much for me to do. I just need to saute up or break down my ground turkey, and I have a little turkey sausage too. So that's that's how I do mine. I take, if I'm making turkey sausage, I take, I know it's not traditional, but this is how I like my turkey spaghetti. Ground turkey and some um, turkey sausage, and I blend them together. Season it with a little salt, pepper, and um, garlic powder because everything, every layer has to be seasoned in order for it to be good. So I take that and I um, break it down. I add my um, spaghetti sauce. Normally I would have had to, if I was using a jarred tomato sauce from the store, I'd be trying to doctor it up. But now what I'm going to do is use my fresh homemade um, spaghetti sauce. And I don't have to um, doctor it up because this tastes exactly how I want it to taste and it looks exactly how I want it to look. This right here is going to be good. Hey, you know what else you could do? If you are hankering, I'm just saying, if you're hankering you, and you have those cheese sticks, mozzarella sticks, I'm just saying this and some mozzarella sticks is good. You can actually even take this and some of this bread and start that my inner fat girl comes out when I think about the um, options that I have with the spaghetti sauce but um, my pasta is ready I'm going to go ahead and get this pasta out of this pot and actually get some to show you guys because the pasta is ready I turned it off I'm just gonna get a little bit you know what you don't even actually have to do pasta noodles you know what you could use you could actually use zoodles. You can take um, a zucchini and you can um, take a nice little zucchini and uh, shred it up really good and add it to um, use it for spaghetti. And then you have your whole vegetarian meal. You can also, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I've done it numerous times when, uh, when, back in the day when I was um, vegan or vegetarian and trying to eliminate some of the carbs in my life. What I, did, what I would do is I would take a spaghetti squash, believe it or not. I would take a spaghetti squash, split it in half, drizzle it with some olive oil, season it with a little salt and pepper, only salt and pepper, and then I'd slide it in the oven um, face down um, on a sheet pan, and then I would just cook it in the oven until it's done. When it's done, it shreds, and it looks just like spaghetti noodles. And that's what I would have with my um, spaghetti, my vegetarian spaghetti. My husband was so glad when I started back eating meat. I don't know why he thought um, that I would not ever come back from the from that side. So I'm gonna just take my little basil and there you have it. Nice little spaghetti, homemade spaghetti sauce. Let's taste it go in. I didn't add a lot of salt because also salt my noodles. 
hey, how fun would this be for the kids? Get some alphabet pasta and do this with the kids. That would be really good if you have tiny kids. And um, you can also throw carrots in this if you're trying to get them to eat more vegetables. Throw carrots, do some alphabet pasta. Mm -mm. Okay, here we go. Mm. 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 Oh my gosh. I'm so glad I added the extra basil. I didn't cut my bread. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Let's, let's get a piece of this bread. Crispy, crunchy bread. Y'all gonna judge me. I'm not gonna dip it in. I'm just gonna take it and just add a little bit to the top. Like that. Just a little bit to the top. Let's go. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hey, did y'all hear the crunch on that? It's really good. Great combination. Okay. So, hopefully you guys will take the time, make some homemade marinara sauce. Keep it in your pantry. Once it cools down, leave it back there. It'll hold for a good three, four, maybe six months. Pull it out anytime you want to make spaghetti. It makes for a super simple, easy meal. It's quick, it's simple, and you can let it simmer all day, or you can do it really fast like I did and, and go ahead and serve it. The longer it sits, the better it's going to taste. That's the reason why I, I, I'm saying you can still eat it right now, but let it simmer, put a lid on it, and let it just simmer, and let it just go, and then you'll be able to jar it up and... Um, process the, process the jars jar it up and then you'll be ready thank you so much for joining me today in my kitchen i hope you'll be back next week as we figure out what we're going to do next week thank you for being patient with me i appreciate and love each and every one of you don't forget to go over to Lil Trey's Kitchen on YouTube, subscribe, click, comment, and click the bell for notifications that I have uploaded new videos. I thank you so much. Big hugs and tight squeeze. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.